Hi everyone, welcome to our live stream. Today is June 30th and I will be discussing how to build a uniform and solid tracking process for your marketing campaigns so that you can measure effectively the performance of your marketing efforts and drive maximum ROI. Okay, let's get started. First, let's discuss what you will need in order to set up a successful tracking process. Number one, you need to have a, a CRM account like Salesforce, for example, where you will be recording all of your marketing campaigns that you're gonna be running throughout the year. So in my case, I have Salesforce, and this is where I will be recording all my campaigns that I will be creating for the year. Number two, you need to have an analytics account such as GA4 or Adobe. And for the purposes of this example, I'm going to be using GA4. Number three, and that's the most important part, you need to have an alignment or a match between the GA4 channels that you are going to be tracking and you can create your own channel group here and this group should have all of the marketing channels which you're going to be using to promote your products and services and these need to match the campaign type groups included into your CRM tool. You absolutely need this parity because it's going to enable you to have the ability to compare apples with apples when you're building your reports. Because if you have one type of grouping here, completely different type of grouping here, and yet a third type of grouping in your marketing process, then it's going to be very difficult for you to have a uniform reporting that really helps you drive informed decisions. Okay, let's assume that now we have all of this parity in place. So the next step that I'm going to show you is how to build your tracking setup structure. Okay, let's start with the user journey and marketing funnel. As marketers, we build all of our campaigns around these main four groups, acquisition, lead gen, conversion, and retention. When we want to attract users or create uh, awareness about our products and services, we put a lot of effort and create a lot of acquisition campaigns. Then we create a lot of lead gen campaigns when we try to get these users to commit to providing us with their contact information so that we can continue the conversation. And conversion campaigns aim at converting any potential or existing lead into a customer. Retention campaigns focus on making sure that customers are delighted and we have repeat purchases from them. So when you're building your tracking setup, you start with exactly these four groups under which you are going to implement your campaigns. And my recommendation is that you need to work with your analytics team to create a custom dimension, which will be tracking these as, let's say, campaign categories. These categories will enable you to have high-level reports comparing marketing performance month to month or quarter to quarter. Next, you need to document your campaigns that you're going to be implementing and your budgeted for each one of these categories. You will also need to decide if you are going to be using the same friendly name for the UTM campaign tag that records your campaigns in Google Analytics it's okay to have a friendly name for your campaign and a tracking name for your campaign, especially if your tracking campaign includes a lot of details such as region, language, and other components, as long as you're always, always consistent in your naming conventions. We'll show you a couple of recommendations regarding that a little bit later. Then the next step is your channels or the mediums. As I mentioned to you earlier, you need to have parity between your marketing channels on which you're going to be promoting your campaigns, Google Analytics, and Salesforce CRM to ensure ability to compare apples with apples when you're building your reporting. 
these are known in Google speak as UTM mediums. Next is your promotional websites or vehicles. They are also known as UTM sources in Google speak. And these are all of the websites on which you're going to be promoting your products and services. For example, if you're doing paid search, your UTM source could be Bing, it could be Amazon, it could be Google. If you are using email as your promotional channel or medium, your sources could be newsletter, PR email, sales email, onboarding email, etc. Once you have defined your mediums, aka channels and sources, the next step is to define what you're going to be measuring. You are ideally going to have to measure every single bit of content that you create and it's going to be done through the UTM content tag. You are also going to be measuring your A-B testing. For example, if you are promoting a banner with different dimensions on different websites, you are going to have to track and see which dimension or which placement of your banner works best for you, etc. Last but not least, you need to have custom tags in place. If you have multiple products, multiple brands, if you have multiple languages, multiple countries, multiple regions, etc. It's important because the more custom tags you include, the better your tracking will be and you will have better information to make more informed decisions to be successful in your marketing. Once you have this setup or this architecture in place, the next step is you have to define the media that you're going to be tracking versus the one that you're not going to be tracking so that you can make it easy for everybody who is involved in the process. So I have given you here a cheat sheet which has in white the media that we're not going to be tracking and in blue the media that we are going to be tracking. So as you can see here, and you can do the same or I can share this with you, here you can list your mediums or your promotional channels. And then I have split this into owned, earned, and paid media to make it easier to group the channels that we are tracking versus the ones that we are not tracking. So as you can see, earned examples include organic search. Organic search is something which does not depend on us. We try our best to optimize our pages and our websites, but ultimately it depends on the search engine and its algorithm whether we are going to receive traffic or not, whether we are going to receive ranking or not. It's an example of an earned uh, media. And earned media, even if we want to, we can never track. Versus paid media, where if we are doing paid campaigns on Google, we absolutely 100% must track it so that we can measure effectiveness, ROI, and we can see if we can improve this channel or this promotion. Once you have all of this set up and in place, then the next step is put all of your information in a playbook. Why do you need a playbook? Number one, because it's very easy. Once you put everything in place, it's always easy to come back and refer to it. When you have new team members that are joining, it's very easy to refer them to it because they can go through everything and, and see how everything's organized. And number three, if you need to improve your process, you can always review what you have in place and it will help you kind of see if there are any gaps or if there are any opportunities to improve everything. So let me give you an example of a playbook, which I have here. And if you're interested, I can absolutely share it, share it with you. This is actually a spreadsheet, which has a nice and easy setup. This is a setup which only uses UTM values. And here you can have the UTM campaign. And again, my recommendation is you need to think about your UTM campaign conventions because you need to have a standardized process. And it's very important. UTM campaign is what Google will use to list in its platform your campaigns so that you can track them. That's why you need to have parity between your Salesforce campaigns, your Google Analytics campaigns, and your marketing campaigns so that you can have great uniform quality reporting. Then you can have UTM ID. Here I have listed for you all the media, the media type, and I have already conveniently set up 
which media will be tracked and have provided examples for you for your TM source, marketing tactic, etc. As you will see here, you have NA, which means that this is our media and it's not being tracked. You also can see here the link architecture. I have also provided here an advanced setup where you can have a lot of custom tags depending on what you want to track. If you want to track the year, if you want to track start date, end date, if you want to track category, brand, brand product, etc. You also have the link architecture here as well. Now, once you decide on what mode are you following, are you following the simple one or advanced one, then what we are providing you here with is a sheet dedicated to every single tag. For example, the UTM campaign tag. My recommendation is do not let users type the UTM campaign tag manually. It is much better to grab everything from a preset combination of either custom tags or better yet, you can pull this automatically from your CRM campaign. For example, in Campaign Trackly, our tracking tool has the ability to integrate with Salesforce. So what we do is we give you the opportunity to automatically pull your campaign data from your Salesforce platform. Um, here is an example of the campaign object in Salesforce and the fields that we are pulling automatically for you. So if you are to create a campaign here using the new button and you build your campaign with specific name, description, type, start date, end date, etc. Once you create the campaign, it will automatically be sent into our marketing campaigns. And once it's sent into marketing campaigns, you are able to immediately generate a URL campaign for it. And under this URL campaign, you can proceed to creating a brand new link that you will be adding. So it's as simple as add links. It will open our template builder. You can drag here a template, which is simply a preset combination of tracking tags. You can add a link, any type of link that you have already stored. You hit go to step two and give the tool a little bit of time to combine everything in place for you together. Once everything is combined, you're going to see that all you need to do is hit finish and save because all of the tags have been pre-populated for you. And during the finish and save process, we check whether your link is being tracked. It's telling me, hey, this page is not being tracked. Um, and it says error. And then hopefully, if everything is good, you have your link here. It's ready to share. It's ready to edit with our short link editor if you want to change anything such as custom alias or add password or add expiration date, etc. And you should be ready to go. Your link is automatically, if it is being tracked by GA Analytics, it's automatically sent to GA Analytics and you will be able soon to see great reports. And that's how it works. Then going back to my playbook, once you have your UTM campaign set up and you know that it's going to be generated every single time in a standardized way, you can continue with your UTM content. Very simple setup. You again have to have rules in place where you decide whether it's a single value tag, what is the format, lowercase, dashes, um, what is the architecture, and you can do similar setup and documentation for your UTM channels, your UTM term, as well as your custom tags. It's important to document the architecture for every single tag type because this makes sure that whatever you document here is also what you set up in your tracking tool, whether it's Campaign Trackly or anything else. You should be able to set up the rules for your tags with a simple click, and it will be propagating to all of your links at all times. 
setting up the rules goes hand in hand with your UTM tags. Here's an example where I have added all of your mediums and sources, contents, terms, as well as your custom tags. You should be able to get started and implement your process with great success. The next step, however, that you need to consider is it is always, always good to document where exactly in the campaign production process you are going to dedicate time to add your trackable links. It is good to document this, A, because your stakeholders need to know this, all of the users involved into the process, they need to know that they should not be going to step six unless they have fulfilled step five. This makes sure that the process is followed and every single time you have trackable links in place so that your reporting is complete. And then last but not least, it is always good to document your automation flaws. If there's any automation, for example, if you're using templates like the template that I just showed you in generating a link, you need to document these templates so that everybody knows what is included in your templates. If you are integrating with a CRM tool like Salesforce, which is going to be sending to your tracking tool, your campaign information, or vice versa, if you are sending trackable links back to another tool, again, it is really, really good for you to document and create simple diagrams so that everybody is aware how that works. And that concludes my presentation today. Just as a recap, here are the five steps that you can follow in building a uniform tracking process. Number one, you need to make sure that there's parity between your CRM, your analytics tool, and your marketing link tracking process and platform. Number two, you need to set up your tracking architecture and document which media types you will track and how. Number three, you have to create a playbook where you'll document your link architecture, your tags, your tag rules, and everything else that goes with the process. Number four, you have to define it which step of your campaign production process you will be adding link tracking. You need to make it a mandatory step and you need to make sure that everyone included in a process is bought into it and will follow it. That is key to making sure your reporting is uniform. And last but not least, number five, transfer all of your rules, tags, and users into your tracking link platform to get started. And you should be all set and very soon seeing some amazing, great reports. Well, thank you so much for your time to watch this live stream. I appreciate you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. I'll be here. Have a wonderful day. Bye.